In this video, we will look at how a laser weapon like the Iron Beam works. The Iron Beam is a directed energy weapon air defense system manufactured by Raphael Advanced Defense Systems. It is designed to destroy short range rockets, artillery, mortar bombs, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The Iron Beam is not a replacement for the Iron Dome. In fact, it is a force multiplier that is cheaper and it is also controlled by the Battle Management Center and the radar system. If the Iron Dome uses missiles, the Iron Beam uses a laser beam with 100 kilowatts of power, enough to melt the metal parts of the target. A laser weapon is a type of directed energy weapon that uses a laser beam to inflict damage. Different countries, such as China, Russia, UK, and the US have already made laser weapons. But in this video, we will look at the iron beam since they are just the same type. Let's first see how laser works. If you don't know, laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Wow, it's even cooler that we say the whole name, but don't worry about this long name right now because we will discuss it later. There are different types of lasers, such as gas lasers, solid state lasers, fiber lasers, which is used in the iron beam, liquid lasers, and semiconductor lasers. They only differ in the medium or material used, but their working principles or how they work is the same. Basically, a laser is just a light that is amplified. To understand the working principle of a laser, let's first look at the properties of a laser compared to a normal light bulb in our house. First, the beam of a laser is very straight, narrow, and has only one direction, while the light bulb has different directions of its beam. Second, the laser has only one color, because its wavelengths are uniform, but the light bulb has different colors, because the wavelengths of the light are different. Let's look at the working principle of a laser. Let's simplify it, so it's easy to understand. Just comment if you want a more complicated explanation. The operation of a laser starts here with what we call atoms. We cannot see atoms with our naked eyes. Special equipment is needed for this. If you don't know, all people including you, things, and animals in this world are made up of atoms. For reference, a person with a weight of 70 kilograms is estimated to have 70 billion 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 atoms. An atom is made up of electrons revolving around a nucleus like this. Maybe you have seen something like this when you were still studying. We will focus on just one atom first. An electron has two moods like a human being. Excited mode when it is hit by energy such as a photon or light and ground state when it loses energy and falls back down. It's easy, isn't it? Excited state when there is energy and ground state when there is no energy. This release of photon from the electron is what we call emission. But the excitation of the electron does not happen naturally on its own. We need to start it. In the case of a fiber laser, it uses an inexpensive diode laser to pump photons to excite the electrons. Now remember that there are so many atoms, so there are also many electrons that become excited. When a photon is released from an electron, it will hit an already excited electron before it can go down completely. So, instead of only one photon being emitted by one atom, two photons will be emitted from it. Then the emitted photons will hit other electrons, and the number of photons will increase. This is now what we call stimulated emission. But we need a lot of photons. That is why a laser has mirrors on both ends, so that the photons bounce back, and back, and back, again and again, to hit the electrons again and again, to make more photons. But the mirror on the other side is designed so that it does not reflect all the photons. And because it doesn't totally reflect the photons, other photons will pass through here. And since these photons have the same wavelength, they appear as a straight line going to the same direction. And the photons that come out of it are what we now call a laser beam. This beam will now be used to hit enemy rockets, mortars, artillery, and UAVs. Although we could not find any reference source on Iron Beam's fiber laser design, this is the typical setup of a fiber laser that is likely used in Iron Beam. This has photon source, which is laser diodes, pump combiner, doped fiber consisting of 
Outer sheath. Cladding or cover. Core made of optical fiber mixed with rare earth element, erbium atoms that act as a medium or like fuel. And at both ends there is a Bragg grating or adjacent mirrors that reflect the photons. Then the laser beam comes out here. So basically a laser is a device where atoms are stimulated to emit light with the same wavelengths and this light is amplified to produce a narrow beam of radiation such as this. Cool, right? Let's thank Albert Einstein because he created the theory that eventually led to the invention of laser. Now, the iron beam operates like this, just like the iron dome. It starts with detection. This radar detects an incoming rocket and other enemy targets from the battery and the radar transmits information about the rocket's path to the command and control center. Next is the prediction. This is the control center's calculation of the possible location of where the enemy rockets will fall, and it will check whether the enemy rockets will hit areas with many people or buildings or not. Next is assessment. When the calculation shows that many people or buildings will be hit by the enemy rockets, the Iron Dome will target it using radar. Enemy rockets that do not hit many people or buildings will no longer be targeted and will be left to save energy. Lastly is the interception. Using the BMC, the iron beam will now be ordered to fire on the targets within its range, which is seven kilometers. Of course, the iron dome will still be used for more distant targets. When the target is a rocket, the laser targets the fins, rudder, or the warhead. When it's a drone, the wing, tail, engine or propeller, or camera is targeted if there is one. Artillery and mortar shells are targeted where the explosive is placed so that it explodes while it is flying. The laser beam emitted by the iron beam has a diameter of a coin. In terms of cost per kill, the iron beam is better than the iron dome because each Tamir missile of the iron dome is worth $40,000 to $100,000 each while the iron beam is said to be only $2 per kill, according to one source, and $2,000 from another source. Regardless, it is clearly still cheaper than the iron dome. As amazing as the iron beam is, it also has its limitations. First is its range of seven kilometers as mentioned earlier, because it only has 100 kilowatts of power. This is due to a phenomenon we call as thermal blooming effect, or thermal lensing effect, where the beam expands, bends, distorts, or defocuses, causing the efficiency of the beam to weaken. The same US laser weapon made by General Atomics has a power of 300 kilowatts, that is why it can reach up to roughly 38 kilometers. At the time of the creation of this video, the two countries are already talking about a possible collaboration to further strengthen the ability of the iron beam. Second, it is not all weather unlike the Iron Dome. Clouds or fog, thick smoke, and rain affect laser efficiency. So when the weather is bad, the Iron Dome will be used. Third is the kill time. Once the laser hits the target, it will not immediately destroy it. It is said that it will take about a maximum of 10 seconds before the laser destroys the target, unlike the Iron Dome, which destroys the target instantly. However, the development of laser weapons has not yet been finalized and many more changes will happen in the future that will further strengthen the capabilities of the Iron Beam and other laser weapons that will definitely change the shape of modern warfare. Also, watch our video about how the Iron Dome system works.